So today I'm gonna to talk about career paths in architecture, engineering, and construction that don't require a bachelor's degree. And I have one piece of advice for excelling your journey in the AEC industry without a bachelor's degree. I'm Jay, I'm a licensed structural engineer. I wanted to talk about some career paths that make my job as an engineer easier, but they don't get the real credit or the recognition that they deserve. So the first career path in AEC that doesn't require a four-year degree is what I would classify as technicians. So this category includes CAD technicians, BIM technicians, architectural technicians, mechanical technicians, electrical, structural, civil. These individuals are working the closest to licensed architects and engineers doing tasks that are necessary for architects and engineers to provide a complete building design. These tasks vary from office to office and discipline to discipline. So for example, when I work on a project, my responsibility is performing calculations and verifying that my design meets code and detailing the building for construction. The technician I work with is typically responsible for the modeling of the elements of the building in a modeling software like Revit with my guidance and making the drawings look presentable. Some technicians are capable of doing engineering and architectural tasks though. I've worked on projects where I've coordinated all of the work with an architecture technician that was under the guidance of a licensed architect. I've worked with mechanical technicians that have designed the entire mechanical system of buildings. I've worked with structural technician that can read civil drawings and set the footing elevation of a wall footing so that the building is protected from frost damage. That saves me time where I can focus on more complicated and pressing work. It can increase profits from a project and the owner may see reduced costs based on the contract. Technicians typically have a two year degree, but there are plenty that I've worked with that only have a high school diploma. But obviously by going to a two year school, you'll receive more training and pay on the job. Technicians with a two year degree in AEC are consistently ranked as having the highest paying job with an associate's degree. The second career path is the most common path which I'm sure. The second career path is the most common, which I'm sure you're not surprised. Skill trades. The list of these types of professions is really long. Iron workers, welders, concrete finishers, masons, crane operators, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, painters, tile installers, drywall installer, anything that's part of constructing a building, road, transmission tower, falls into skilled trades. I'm not gonna get into detail about each type of skilled trade, but I will say that even if you have the slightest bit of interest in trades, there is a career path for you. The education requirements for skilled labor varies. Some have two-year degrees and some only have a high school education. Apprenticeship programs and trade school is common language for gaining education in these types of careers. But obviously a two-year degree again sets you up for more pay and faster opportunities and leadership. There isn't a two-year degree for each trade, but I have seen, for example, residential construction programs where students can learn the aspects of building a home. So there's plenty opportunities to learn the skill you need to if you're willing to put in the work. The final career path, sales. I know what you're thinking. What does sales have to do with building things? Well, a lot. Let me explain. This is an H3 Hurricane Tie by Simpson Strong Tie. This is a common piece of hardware in wood construction that attaches roof framing to walls. I discovered this from a lunch and learn where a sales rep introduced me to Simpsons products line. After the meeting, the sales rep kept me up to date with new and discontinued products. And with the help of their engineering team, the rep answered any design questions that I may have had. So essentially the sales rep is the middleman that links architects and engineers to products so that we're able to design and engineer buildings effectively. And that's just one example. There's plenty more. Medical equipment, anchor bolts, rooftop units, kitchen appliances, and the list goes on and on. 
All of them require some knowledge of building design to assist us with using their products in our final design. It's a job most don't associate with this industry because of how broad sales can be, but it's very important in the growth and innovation of our work. Sales reps come from all sorts of education backgrounds. There are plenty past architects and engineers that now work in sales, and there are plenty without that experience. All that matters is if you have the desire to learn about the AEC industry and products used by AEC professionals, and you have a passion for selling, this is a great opportunity to play a role in the industry. So those are the three career paths that you can enter without needing a bachelor's degree. And as promised, I have one piece of advice that can accelerate your career in AEC. So my advice to you is to really consider getting a two-year degree from a public community college, especially if you don't make a lot of money. So in today's world, one of the major topics in education is debt cancellation and affordable higher education. In response to this, some states and cities have launched programs that will cover the cost of your two-year degree. Also, federal student aid can cover most, if not all, of your tuition at a community college, depending on your income. I transferred to a community college after starting my college journey at Jackson State University. One of the federal grants I received was called the Pell Grant, which is one of those income-based grants that community college students can receive as long as you meet the requirements. The amount of money that I received alone from this grant was enough to pay for my entire time at community college. This past school year, the max amount an individual could receive is $6,495 for a full-time student. So let's say you enroll full-time and you qualify for the max amount. For one semester, you receive half the grant and you're taking 12 credit hours at an average $185 a credit hour. That's $2,220 for tuition. I can almost guarantee the $1,000 left over will cover your books and fees. Even if you enroll part-time, taking six credits and your grant gets cut in half, you're still going to be covered. So you can go to school at your own pace and comfort level for free and earn something that can excel your career in architecture, engineering, and construction. Even if it takes you four years to finish it, who cares? So those were the three career paths in architecture, engineering, and construction that don't require a bachelor's degree. And my tip to really consider getting a two-year degree. If you found this helpful, let me know in the comments, like it. And if you think this would be helpful to someone you know, share it with them. I'm Jay, and until next time, I'm out.